Welcome back to Go Parametric. Today we're going to be doing a three piece window, and this will show you how to create three panels using this similar method to what we did in the last video so that you can keep all the mullions the same width in respect to each other. That's the final result. Now, as you'll see, I've just traced this window here from the CAD, and you notice that this top panel is a little bit thinner than the bottom panel. So, basically I've just created this using splines and extruded them up or swept when needed, and then sliced that up into even parts where I need them to be. You'll notice that this window also sits a little bit higher than this window. So I'll show you how to make all this work together. So let's start with our rail clone. And basically we're gonna keep this same arithmetic node we used last time to place the X pieces in the order for the selector. This will make more sense soon. So let's pop down an array our segment and our spline. Our spline shape here. And we'll set up our default piece to be the pivot because our pivots all here projecting from the wall. So no matter what, if we adjust the thickness of these, they'll come out from the correct position. Now we don't need it to bend, so we'll keep that turned off. And we'll set the array area to extend scale. And if you watched the last video, you'll notice that on the X counter, we used one because we only needed one piece in the center. Now we need two pieces. So let's set that to two. And now we can plug in our pieces. So. Again, naming is crucial to making your life a little bit easier for plugging in all these pieces. So <laughs> let's start with our default pieces. This is just left, middle, right. jumbled. Let's do that just quickly again, make our work a little bit easier. Okay, our default pieces, left, middle, right. Then we have our start and end. Our top, now our top has three pieces. Left, middle, right. Our bottom will have three pieces as well. Left, middle, right. And then we have our corner pieces. So that's our start, top, end, top, start, bottom, end, bottom. And then our two columns. So this will be X1, top, middle, bottom. And our second column, top, middle, bottom. Give ourselves a bit of room because we're going to need a few nodes here. So let's start with making the frame. That way we can see how it comes together a little bit easier before we complicate things. So let's plug the start in and our end piece in and our spline in. Okay, good. Let's build the corner pieces. And we can see straight away our corner pieces are working. So before we then do the top piece, let's put the columns in. 
so that we can see which way they're facing. We want to make sure that this is turning that way and this is turning that way. So we chuck in a selector for both of these. Top, mid, bottom, top, mid, bottom. And we can export the index. So our arithmetic node will be controlling the index for both of these so that it tells it to put x1 here, x2 there, x3 there, no matter how wide or dimensions that we change on this rectangle. So to get them to work on the left side and the right side, we'll do the similar to as we did in the last video. And we'll say, if it's on the left, use this one. If it's on the right, use that one. And we'll say on the spline, it's less than 50%. It'll be true, otherwise false. And as you can see, our frame is working on that side, our frame is working on that side, and in the center we have exactly what we need. A thin frame at the top, a thick frame at the bottom. Beautiful. <clears throat> so, how do we get the top piece and the bottom piece in to work effectively? Well, it's similar. Um, we can use a better method though using the conditional. And that is, let's plug our top left in and our middle left in. And this time, instead of the spline position, we use a counter. So we just leave it at one for now, and let's plug it in. So we know that's working. True, false. But what about this one? Well, we need to plug this in. So let's make another one of these. Copy and paste. And we'll plug in the right side into the false, and we'll plug this in. So. Now it's messed up this one. That's okay, because we'll change the counter to two, keeping that original conditional, one and two. And now we have on our second one, our last piece. So we can see our top piece is working as per our design here. So we can just do the exact same thing for the bottom piece. So let's take this, copy and paste, and we'll plug in our left, our middle, and our right. And let's plug that into the bottom piece. Now, they are all working together. We just have to now do the exact same thing for the glass, because we have to remember this glass is lower than this one, and this is the exact same level as this one. So we know by doing the same method, we'll be able to complete the window. Now we have our three-piece window. We can now go ahead and test this. Yes, that is working. No matter what, our mullions will stay the same width all the way around, and our window is done. Now, just to give you a quick sneak peek of what's coming, um, That is the fixed three-piece window. I showed you last time the conditional working on a double piece. So one profile on the left, one profile on the right. Next time around, I'm going to show you how to combine two rail clones together so we can create an awning window. Now with this one, you can see we can change the width. And we can open the window. We can change the mullion height, awning rotation. And in the next one, we've got this one. We can change the window position so it comes off the spline. We can change the frame depth 
so it gets thicker. We can offset the glass pieces themselves for when we change the depth. We can adjust the mullions thickness. We can adjust the height of the bottom mullion, or we can even slide the window open. So, look forward to seeing you in the next episodes.